Welcome to Scratch Junior Coding. This is a series of videos to help you learn to code using Scratch Junior. On Scratch Junior, you can create your own stories, riddles, games, and whatever else you want to create. You're in control of everything and the programs that you write. Today, we're going to play around with how to make our characters move. I have three scenes. Let's see what they do. There's a red ball rolling down a hill and then back up a hill. There's a bat flying closer and closer to us. And there's a rabbit jumping across the screen. Let's see how to do that. Open your Scratch Junior app and this is the project that I was working on. Let's go in there and see how I did the code. Usually you'll use multiple scenes to tell your story. But I have multiple scenes just to show you different characters and how they move. Let's start with the rabbit. First, let's look at how I made the rabbit jump and move to the right. Let's create a new scene. Grab a background. and put a character in there. We want our frog to jump to the right across the whole scene whenever we click the green flag. So we want him to move right and to jump. Let's see what that looks like. So he moves right and then he jumps. If we make him do that four times, it's going to move right, jump, move right, jump, move right, jump, move right, jump, four times. Let's see what that looks like. That does not look like a frog jumping. We need him to move right while he jumps at the same time. And we can have more than one green flag so that these scripts run at the same time. So when I click the green flag, he's going to move right. When I click the green flag, he'll jump. This will both run at the same time. But he needs to do it a lot more than that. Let's make him do it just looping forever. There he goes. Let's look at red ball. He rolls down the hill, across, and then back up. Let's see if we can do that. We can only have four scenes in Scratch Junior, so I'm going to delete our frog. And create a new scene. I drew this background with the editor. I picked a background and then edited it to draw some dirt going this way and this way. You might also need your character to go down and back up like this if you're creating a maze game. I'm going to get my Red Among Us guy and let him go down the hill. I'm going to make him a little smaller. So he needs to go down and to the right at the same time and then go just right and then up and to the right. So let's give him a whole bunch of going to the right. Let's just make him go right forever. Let's see what that looks like. So when I first hit the green flag, he needs to not just go right, but go down, what, maybe about five, and then to the right, no, he's already going to be going to the right. This will make him keep going to the right, so we have to not go up or down for a little while. 
we need a pause right here. So don't go up or down for 10. And then go up for 5. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, 5 was too much. So let's go down 4. And wait for 20. And you just have to play with the numbers until you can get it to follow your path. So that works for my Among Us guy. What if we were trying to do that with a ball? I'm going to copy my code to the ball by just dragging it over there. I'm going to make our Among Us guy invisible. And let's play with red ball for a minute. Let's see what this does with red ball. So the path is pretty close, but since he's a ball, he also needs to be rolling. So at the same time that he's moving to the right and moving down and back up, he also needs to be rolling. For now, let's just say roll forever. And let's see what that looks like. So he goes down and across and then back up. Now for the last character, the bat, we're going to have to get rid of scene four. And let's see what the bat does. Does it look like he's flying closer to you? That's what I was trying to do. So he's way over here. And he moves to the right, and then as he's flying close to you, he gets bigger and bigger. If something's walking away from you and you're trying to do a story about that, you can make them get smaller and smaller, and it would make them look like they're walking away. Let's see if we can redo this in scene four. I picked, where is that? Spooky dark background right here, and I edited it because I couldn't really see the bat. And so I just dumped some orange in there. So that I could see my bat better. Let's use that. Okay, so we have a background. Let me get a bat. So we want him to fly to the right. What, maybe about five? See how far that goes. That's good. And then we want him to fly towards us. So we've got to start making him get bigger. Get bigger changes how he looks. So that's in the looks blocks, the purple ones. And we want him to get bigger by two, but a bunch of times. So we'll put that in the loop. So if he gets bigger by two and then loops and does that four times, let's see what that looks like. Let's make him get bigger 20 times and see what happens. Ooh, he's getting so close. That looks pretty good. He's not really flying though. He's not flapping his wings. The best way I could figure out how to make it look like he was flying is at the same time that he's moving to the right and flying towards us, I also 
start with the green flag. Make him move one way and then move the other way. And then we'll just put that in a loop so he'll keep twisting to the right and back to the left. There he goes. He's flying. Now he's just hovering right there in front of us. Now if I added the code to make him fly up and disappear, we would have the same thing as we did in scene two. So let's run the whole thing again. When you're creating your own stories and games, if you need something to roll or fly or come towards you or go away from you or hop across the screen, then remember to use a couple of scripts running at the same time so that you can get it to look right. Now it's your turn. If you can create a character and make them roll or hop or fly towards you or whatever it is you want them to do using at least a couple of scripts at the same time to make it look realistic, then congratulations, you've mastered this lesson. This free coding lesson was provided by STEM in Games. Watch more lessons and keep practicing so you can create new worlds and games and make your ideas come to life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.